It was supposed to be the happiest day of my life, the day I dreamed about for years. My wedding day in Chicago was meant to be a celebration of love and joy, surrounded by family and friends. Instead, it turned into a nightmare that shattered everything I believed in. The ceremony was beautiful. The music played softly, the flowers were arranged perfectly, and the guests were all smiles. I looked around the room, feeling a rush of excitement and anticipation. Peter and I had been planning this day for months, and I couldn't wait to begin our life together. But as the evening progressed, things took a turn for the worse. It started when Peter's mother, Mrs. Johnson, approached me with a stern look on her face. She was in her late fifties, with an air of authority that often overshadowed everyone around her. Scarlet, she said, her voice dripping with disdain. I need to speak with you. I followed her to a quieter corner of the venue, hoping it was just a minor concern. But Mrs. Johnson's face was flushed with anger. You've been incredibly disrespectful today, she declared, her eyes narrowing. You've embarrassed me in front of all these people. I was taken aback. I had been nothing but polite and respectful. What are you talking about? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm. She didn't give me a chance to explain. Don't act innocent, she snapped. You think you can come into this family and behave however you like? You're a disgrace. Peter, who had been mingling with the guests, came over at that moment. He looked from his mother to me, his expression unreadable. What's going on here? He asked, though his tone suggested he already knew. Scarlet has been disrespectful, Mrs. Johnson said, her voice rising. She's ruined the day for everyone. Before I could defend myself, Peter's face twisted with anger. Is this true? He demanded, his gaze piercing. Have you been causing trouble? No, I said, feeling the sting of his accusation. I haven't done anything wrong. I was just trying to enjoy our wedding. But Peter's eyes hardened. You've made a fool of yourself and my mother, he said, his voice loud enough for nearby guests to hear. This is unacceptable. The words stung, but nothing prepared me for what happened next. In a shocking move, Peter raised his hand and slapped me across the face. The sound of the slap echoed through the room, and I felt a wave of humiliation wash over me. My face burned, not just from the physical pain, but from the sheer embarrassment of being hit in front of everyone. The room fell silent. Guests exchanged uneasy glances, but no one intervened. Peter's mother watched with a satisfied smirk, as if she had won some victory. You're a fat woman who's dishonored my mother, Peter shouted, his voice filled with venom. I can't believe I married someone like you. I stood there, stunned, tears welling up in my eyes. The crowd was a blur of shocked faces. I wanted to run, to hide from the world, but instead, I found myself standing frozen, unable to comprehend what had just happened. Peter's behavior wasn't just shocking, it was a devastating blow. In front of all those people, I felt my dignity slip away. As the guests slowly resumed their conversations, I felt the weight of their judgment on me. The laughter and music seemed to mock my misery. When I finally managed to compose myself, I knew I couldn't stay there any longer. I excused myself from the reception and found a quiet place in the back of the venue, away from prying eyes. The tears flowed freely now as I tried to process the events of the evening. I'd always imagined this day as a fairy tale, a dream come true. Instead, it had turned into a cruel reminder of the harsh reality I was facing. My marriage, which I had hoped would bring me happiness and security, had revealed itself as a sham. Peter's and his mother's behavior was more than just a fleeting moment of anger. It was a glimpse into a toxic and abusive dynamic I had not fully understood before. The humiliation of the evening was a harsh wake-up call. I knew I couldn't allow this to be the end of my story. As I looked at my reflection in the dim light, I made a silent vow to myself. I would not remain a victim of their cruelty. I would seek justice and expose the truth, no matter how difficult the journey ahead might be. The wedding, once a symbol of new beginnings, had become a turning point in my life. The pain and betrayal I felt were profound, but they also ignited a fire within me. I knew that the road to reclaiming my life and seeking justice would be long and arduous, but I was determined to face it head-on. This was just the beginning of my fight. 
In the weeks following the disastrous wedding, I felt like I was living in a fog. The pain of Peter's public humiliation was still fresh, but what stung even more was the realization that my marriage had been a facade. Despite the turmoil, I knew I couldn't let Peter and Mrs. Johnson's cruelty define my life. I needed to take control and find a way to fight back. The first step in my plan was to gather evidence. I knew that exposing Peter and his mother would require more than just my word. I needed proof of the emotional and financial abuse I had endured. That's when I decided to hire Detective Robert Hayes, a private investigator known for his discretion and effectiveness. I reached out to him, and after a brief consultation, he agreed to take on my case. Detective Hayes was in his mid-40s, with a calm demeanor and a sharp mind. He listened intently as I recounted the events of the wedding and described the pattern of abuse I had experienced. I understand how difficult this must be for you, he said, but if you're willing to work with me, we can get to the bottom of this. I nodded, feeling a glimmer of hope. I'll do whatever it takes, I said. I just want the truth to come out. With Detective Hayes on board, I started recording my conversations with Peter and Mrs. Johnson. It was uncomfortable and stressful, but I knew it was necessary. I hid a small recorder in my purse, making sure to capture every conversation I had with them. It wasn't long before I realized how manipulative and abusive they truly were. One evening, Peter and I had a heated argument over dinner. I was recording the conversation, and I remember feeling a mix of dread and determination as I listened to Peter's angry outbursts. You're so useless, he said, his voice dripping with disdain. Why can't you do anything right? I try to stay calm. I'm doing my best, I said, but you're always so critical. Peter's response was venomous. Your best isn't good enough. You're a burden on me and my mother. Everyone can see it. The more I listened to these recordings, the more I realized how deeply rooted their abuse was. It wasn't just about the public humiliation. It was a pattern of emotional cruelty that had been going on for years. I began to piece together a narrative of their behavior, which made me even more determined to expose them. Meanwhile, Detective Hayes was busy investigating their financial dealings. He conducted background checks and looked into their accounts, searching for any signs of wrongdoing. After a few weeks, he returned with troubling news. I've found some suspicious transactions, he said, his face serious. It looks like Peter and Mrs. Johnson might be involved in financial fraud. My heart raced as Detective Hayes laid out the details. There are large sums of money being transferred between various accounts. It seems they might be embezzling funds from clients. The revelation was shocking, but it made sense. Peter was a financial advisor, and Mrs. Johnson had always been heavily involved in his business. Their abusive behavior was beginning to take on a more sinister dimension. They weren't just controlling and cruel, they were criminal. I knew that I needed more than just these financial records to take them down. The recordings of our conversations were crucial, but I also needed to find a way to bring all the evidence together. That's where Anna, my best friend, came in. Anna was in her early 30s, with a fierce loyalty and a sharp mind. She had been a rock for me during this tumultuous time, offering support and encouragement. When I shared the evidence with Anna, her reaction was a mix of shock and determination. We have to do something with this, she said, examining the recordings and financial documents. This isn't just about you anymore. They're committing serious crimes. Anna and I began to analyze everything we had collected. We went through the recordings, highlighting instances of emotional abuse and cross-referenced them with the financial documents. It was exhausting work, but it was also empowering. With each piece of evidence we reviewed, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. One evening, as we were poring over the documents, Anna looked up from her notes. Scarlet, you've already come so far, she said. You've gathered a lot of evidence. Now it's time to take the next step. I nodded, feeling a mix of nervousness and resolve. I know, I said. I'm ready to expose them. They need to be held accountable for what they've done. Our plan was to organize a large event where I would reveal the truth about Peter and Mrs. Johnson. I wanted to make sure it was a public affair, so their deceit and cruelty would be laid bare for everyone to see. The idea was both daunting and exhilarating. It was the final step in my journey from victim to someone who would fight for justice. As we prepared for the event, I could feel the weight of the upcoming revelation bearing down on me. But despite the fear, I was driven by a deep sense of justice and a desire to reclaim my life. With Detective Hayes's help, Anna's unwavering support, and the evidence we had gathered, I felt ready to face whatever came next. The journey had been arduous, but it was leading me toward a turning point. 
I was determined to stand up for myself and expose the truth, no matter how difficult it might be. As the day of the event approached, I knew that this was my chance to take control of my life and fight for justice. The day of the event arrived, and the tension was palpable. I had planned it meticulously, making sure every detail was in place. The venue was a grand hall, decorated elegantly, with an air of sophistication that belied the truth I was about to reveal. I had invited family, friends, and media representatives, hoping to ensure that the truth would be seen and heard by as many people as possible. As the guests began to fill the hall, I felt a mix of anxiety and resolve. The room buzzed with excitement and curiosity, but I couldn't shake the nerves that fluttered in my stomach. Peter and Mrs. Johnson were among the attendees, standing by my side with confident smiles. They had no idea what was about to unfold. The event started with a series of speeches and toasts, creating a festive atmosphere. I played the part of the gracious hostess, all the while feeling like an actor in my own drama. I took deep breaths and tried to calm myself as the moment approached. When the time came for my announcement, I stepped up to the podium. The crowd grew silent, and all eyes were on me. I could see Peter and Mrs. Johnson exchanging glances, their smiles still intact, but with a hint of curiosity. I took a moment to gather my thoughts, feeling the weight of what I was about to do. Thank you all for coming today. I began, my voice steady, but filled with emotion. This event was organized to celebrate a new beginning, but it has become something much more significant. The guests looked intrigued, and I continued, what I'm about to share is something that has been hidden for too long. It's about the truth behind the facade that Peter and his mother have maintained. I saw Peter's smile falter as I spoke, his eyes narrowing in suspicion. Mrs. Johnson's expression remained neutral, but I could sense the tension in her posture. I took a deep breath and pressed a button on a remote control, and the large screen behind me flickered to life. The screen displayed a series of audio recordings and financial documents. The first recording began to play, a conversation between Peter and me during one of our arguments. The audio clearly captured Peter's angry outbursts, his harsh words cutting through the room like a knife. The guests listened in stunned silence as the recording played, revealing the emotional abuse I had endured. I saw a mix of shock and sympathy on their faces as they heard Peter call me names and belittle me. Next, the screen switched to the financial documents that Detective Hayes had uncovered. The documents showed large sums of money being transferred between various accounts, highlighting the fraudulent activities Peter and Mrs. Johnson were involved in. The figures were staggering, and the evidence was clear. As the recordings and documents were presented, Peter's demeanor changed. His face grew pale, and his eyes darted around the room, clearly realizing the gravity of the situation. Mrs. Johnson's face flushed with anger and embarrassment, and she looked around helplessly as the truth was laid bare. I could feel a sense of empowerment as I continued. These recordings and documents are evidence of the abuse and fraud that Peter and his mother have perpetrated. They have manipulated and controlled not just me, but many others. It's time for the truth to be known. The media representatives in the room were busy taking notes and capturing every moment. The atmosphere shifted from one of celebration to one of revelation and outrage. The guests were murmuring among themselves, their shock evident. Peter finally spoke, his voice trembling with a mix of anger and fear. This is ridiculous, he said. These are just lies and distortions. You're trying to ruin us. But his protestations were drowned out by the overwhelming evidence. The guests, now fully aware of the situation, began to react with outrage. Many expressed their disapproval and concern, while others offered support and sympathy. The room was abuzz with conversation, and I felt a sense of vindication. As the event drew to a close, Peter and Mrs. Johnson tried to leave, but their attempts to escape the fallout were thwarted by the media and the crowd. Their once confident facade had crumbled, and they were left to face the consequences of their actions. I watched as the reality of the situation sank in for them. The facade of respectability they had built was shattered, and the truth was out for everyone to see. For me, it was a moment of triumph and a significant step toward reclaiming my life. The event had been a success in exposing Peter and Mrs. Johnson, but it was also a personal victory. I had taken control of my narrative and fought back against the injustice I had faced. As I looked around at the stunned faces and the whirlwind of activity, I felt a mix of relief and determination. The days following the event were a whirlwind of activity and emotion. The truth about Peter and Mrs. Johnson had been exposed, and the fallout was immense. The media coverage was relentless, and the public reaction was a mix of outrage and support for me. 
I had become a symbol of resilience and justice, but the real work was just beginning. In the weeks that followed, the media frenzy intensified. Peter and Mrs. Johnson were scrutinized from every angle, their lives laid bare for the world to see. The financial fraud charges were taken seriously, and investigations began to unravel their illicit dealings. The once confident duo was now facing a legal battle that threatened to strip them of their wealth and reputations. I knew that while the media was focused on them, my own journey was far from over. I had to navigate the legal system to ensure that the justice I sought was served. My lawyer, a skilled professional who had been with me throughout this process, prepared a solid case based on the evidence we had gathered. We compiled the recordings, financial documents, and testimonies to build a strong case against Peter and Mrs. Johnson. The courtroom was a daunting place, but I faced it with a steely resolve. As the trial began, I took the stand to testify about the abuse and fraud. The process was emotionally draining, but I was determined to see it through. Each day in court, I was reminded of the pain and humiliation I had endured, but I was also reminded of my strength and courage. Peter and Mrs. Johnson tried to defend themselves, but their arguments were weak compared to the overwhelming evidence against them. Their attempts to discredit me and dismiss the recordings were futile. The financial documents clearly showed the extent of their wrongdoing, and their credibility crumbled under the weight of the truth. The courtroom drama reached its climax when the judge delivered the verdict. Peter was found guilty of financial fraud and was ordered to pay restitution to his victims. Mrs. Johnson faced legal consequences as well, including fines and a tarnished reputation. The judge granted me a divorce, acknowledging the emotional abuse I had suffered. The victory in court was bittersweet. While it was a relief to see justice served, the process had taken a toll on me. I was exhausted but grateful. I had fought a long and difficult battle, and I had emerged victorious. The emotional scars would take time to heal, but I felt a profound sense of closure and achievement. With the legal battle behind me, I decided it was time to start a new chapter in my life. I moved to a peaceful home outside of Austin, Texas, far away from the chaos and memories of my old life. The new environment offered me a sense of tranquility and a fresh beginning. As I sat on my porch, watching the sun set over the rolling hills, I reflected on my journey. The road had been arduous, filled with pain and challenges, but it had also been a journey of empowerment and resilience. I had reclaimed my life and stood up for what was right. The support of my best friend, Anna, and the help of Detective Hayes had been invaluable, and I was deeply grateful for their unwavering support. The journey from victim to victor had been transformative. I had faced the darkest moments of my life and emerged stronger and more determined. The truth about Peter and Mrs. Johnson's abuse and criminal behavior had been exposed, and I had taken control of my narrative. As I looked out over the peaceful landscape of my new home, I felt a deep sense of peace and satisfaction. I had fought for justice and found a new sense of purpose. The past was behind me, and the future was filled with possibilities. My story was one of empowerment, resilience, and justice. It was a reminder that even in the face of the greatest adversity, one could find the strength to fight back and reclaim their life. I had faced my demons, exposed the truth, and emerged victorious. The journey had been long and difficult, but it had ultimately led me to a place of peace and fulfillment. And so, with a past behind me and a bright future ahead, I embraced the new chapter of my life with hope and determination. I had taken control of my destiny and proved that, even in the darkest of times, one could rise above and find the strength to shine.